Welcome everybody. In the interest of time, we'll go ahead and get started with the webinar today. Um, my name is Caroline Sasserchi. I'm the Municipal Utilities Program Coordinator for the City of Tempe. I oversee our Commercial, Industrial and Institutional or CII Water Conservation Program. Uh, for some general housekeeping items, this program is being recorded. Um, all attendees, their microphones and cameras are disabled, so if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or feel free to raise your hand. Um, if you raise your hand, we'll, I'll be able to unmute you and you can ask questions if they're a little bit too lengthy for the chat box. Um, and uh, yeah, the, pre the presentation will be uploaded to our website by the end of this week and we'll go ahead and jump in. So thank you for your interest in Tempe's uh, Water Conservation and Efficiency Program. We're going to review the Water Efficiency and Education Grant Program, also known as the WEEJ. So we'll go over the eligibility requirements, the application criteria, and the overall application process. So for some background, Tempe Water Conservation and Efficiency maintains a robust rebate grant and education program dedicated to the needs of Tempe's water service area since 1998. The Water Efficiency and Education Grant, formerly titled the Industrial Grant Program, was completely revised in 2021 under the guidance of stakeholder feedback and Tempe-specific data. The WEACH program is open to all non-residential customers in Tempe's water service area, including but not limited to schools, businesses, restaurants, manufacturers, hotels, and retail spaces. Uh, multi-family residential customers and homeowners associations are not eligible for this program. Tempe does offer uh, rebates that are specific to residential, uh, multi-family residential and HOA customers. So if you'd like more information on that, you can visit uh, tempe.gov slash conservation or reach out to us directly. New construction projects and water efficiency upgrades that have already taken place are ineligible for funding. All projects that will generate quantifiable water savings backed by data are eligible for funding. This includes projects in the following categories, uh, domestic or sanitary fixture upgrades and landscaping and irrigation improvements. For these two categories of projects, there are minimum device efficiency standards that apply. Um, and there's more information on that on the upcoming slides. And then cooling tower upgrades and industrial process modifications are also categories eligible for funding but your projects don't have to neatly fit within these exact four broad categories. So to expand upon the domestic or sanitary project requirements, um, upgrades in kitchens and restrooms such as toilets, aerators, and shower heads must use fixtures that are WaterSense labeled. The WaterSense product list is uh, linked to this PowerPoint slide, so we can send that out to you folks at the end of this event today. Um, for landscape projects, all devices must be water sense labeled if applicable. So irrigation controllers must be smart devices that utilize one of the following technologies. Historical evapor evapotranspiration programmed in the, into the controller and accompanied with an active rain sensor or an on-site weather station connected directly to the controller or the controllers capable of receiving evapotranspiration data from regional weather stations through satellite feeds. The smart controller must make seasonal adjust adjustments by changing the watering frequency or days between watering uh, versus watering runtime. For sprinkler projects, the spray sprinkler bodies must contain integral pressure regulation that maintains the recommended operating pressure stated by the high efficiency rotating nozzles manufacturer. And drip irrigation projects must contain built in pressure compensation. For turf replacement and other landscaping upgrades, they must utilize uh, plants from the low water use or drought tolerant plant list as defined by the Arizona Department of Water Resources or ADWR. All projects must also comply with Tempe's landscape code requirements. And all of the specifications that are described here on this slide are summarized in the grant applications terms and conditions. So you can review those in more detail at another time. So for the timeline, uh, the WEACH program follows a fiscal year cycle. Beginning each March, applications open up with a deadline to apply of May 31st by 3 p.m. 
A grant committee will review the applications in June and applicants will be notified of their status by July 1st. Awarded projects will have until April 30th of the following year to complete their projects and until June 1st to submit their closeout report. The closeout report will be explained in more detail in a couple of slides. And then um, grant funds will be distributed by the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th. So this grant provides a 50% coverage of the total project costs, not to exceed $60,000. Funding is reimbursement based with a check issued upon receipt of the final closeout report and confirmation that the project's been completed. The closeout report, as previously stated, is due, is due by June 1st. Uh, selected projects will receive a grant agreement to sign that will outline their awarded amount and highlight important deadlines. Any purchases made prior to signing the grant agreement are ineligible for reimbursement. Project funding is determined at the discretion of the grant committee following the criteria outlined in this presentation. The total funding available for all projects is $60,000. Therefore, applicants may not receive the full amount applied for depending on the size of the application pool each grant cycle. So there are four broad categories of criteria that applicants will be ranked by. Uh, Pre-approval, which I'll go into detail on the next slide. Completeness, all parts of the application are addressed, including quotes, education requirement, the basic forms are filled out, et cetera, um, and everything is submitted by the posted deadline. Effectiveness, will rank projects based on the percent match funding offered out of the total project costs. If an applicant can provide 50% match or higher, this application would score more favorably. I will rank projects based on the annual percentage of water savings estimated, with priority given to those that predict a greater the percentage of savings. And our eligibility requirements, we will discuss um, in a couple slides as well. So the pre-approval process, before submitting an application, please consult with Water Conservation to discuss the potential project scope. Review the fact sheet that we have posted on our website and understand the grant process. Watch the informational webinar, which is what is uh, this program today. Complete a water efficiency audit and register your utility account or accounts on our online customer portal, WaterSmart. Water efficiency audits can be completed by Tempe Water Conservation staff or by a third party vendor of the applicant's choosing. Once completed, audits will remain valid for five years or until a water efficiency upgrade has been made, whichever is sooner. A typical water audit begins with staff working with a customer to find and locate leaks, evaluate internal plumbing fixtures, test and verify water flow rates, and review site specific historical water consumption. Irrigation assessments may be included upon request. Audits conclude with a customized report that includes specific recommendations on efficiency upgrades. And really with our uh, water efficiency audit process, it's kind of a one-stop shop for the pre-approval process. If you're meeting with water conservation um, for a water efficiency audit, we can have the discussion on your potential project scope at that time as well. Um, and link you up with our WaterSmart portal and help you locate your utility accounts. So it's really a great one-stop shop for the pre-approval process. Uh, to expand upon the eligibility criteria, we have, um, as previously mentioned, applicants must be non-residential customers. So multifamily residential sites and HOAs are ineligible. Uh, within Tempe's water service area. First time applicants who have not received WEACH funding are prioritized. Due to Tempe Water Conservation having multiple funding programs dedicated to public entities such as schools, a priority will be placed on non-publicly funded applicants. Projects located on non-member lands or lands that do not have Salt River Project or SRP surface water rights are prioritized over projects on member lands which are SRP lands with surface water rights. Please consult with water conservation to verify which category of lands your project falls within. And lastly, applicants who qualify as a small business are also prioritized. Small businesses are determined by the Small Business Administration and vary by industry. 
So the Small Business Administration has a size standards tool pictured here. Businesses who are unsure of their size should use this tool to make the proper determination. If applicants have further questions, they should contact the Area 6 Office of Government Contracting for the U.S. Small Business Administration or the Office of Size Standards at the contact information listed here. So the application overview. The grant application is a fillable PDF that can be submitted electronically through email. It may also be uh, mailed into the Tempe Water Conservation Office at our PO box located on the slide here. Uh, the application must be received by 3 p.m. on May 31st. The application has the following general sections. Contact information, project description, estimated water savings from proposed project, estimated cost for the project with quotes to be attached to the application, project implementation timeline, education requirement description, an agreement and signature page, and appendices with blank reporting templates. This includes a template for the closeout report that details the water savings, as well as a template sign-in sheet for the education requirement, which we'll explain here in a few slides. Attachments can be added to the application, including data and case studies that verify the estimated water savings. And if the water audit that the business chooses to implement is completed by a third party source, the report for this audit should also be added to the application for reference. Applicants must provide a project budget using the template provided in the grant application. Quotes are to be attached to the application and must be no older than six months from the application deadline date, which is May 31st. Items that have already been purchased outside of the grant agreement are ineligible for reimbursement. Applicants seeking funding of $600 or more must submit a completed W-9 form with their application as well. So applicants are required to hold a water conservation related training <clears throat> during the grant cycle with the goal of educating grant recipient staff on water conservation best management practices and to highlight the efficiency upgrades associated with the grant funding. This can be accomplished through many acceptable formats, <clears throat> excuse me, virtually in a classroom setting or on a tour and should be constructed in a format that's best suited to be effective in reaching the employees of each organization that is receiving grant funding. At a minimum, the training should contain an agenda and a sign in sheet that includes the date and time of training and the name and position of the participants. A template for the sign in sheet can be found within the application appendices and limited training and assistance may be provided by water conservation staff upon request. A final report must be submitted to water conservation that includes a summary of the project's implementation, include receipts of purchases made, a copy of the completed sign-in sheet from the educational requirement, cite photos of the completed project, and summarize any realized water savings to date and a reporting template is provided within the application. So to recap, the first step of the WEACH program is to complete the pre-approval process and submit the application by the May 31st deadline. Applications, or excuse me, applicants will be notified of award status by July 1st, after which a grant agreement will be issued. The agreement will indicate the amount awarded and highlight the deadlines to adhere to. It will serve as the authorization to proceed in purchasing the pre-approved budgeted items listed within the application. Projects must be completed by April 30th and the closeout report must be received by June 1st. Applicants can submit these reports prior to this deadline should projects finish early. After confirmation of project completion, applicants will receive their reimbursement check. And checks will be distributed by the end of fiscal year June 30th. And that concludes our program overview. Um, as mentioned earlier on, we do have um, room for Q&A. So if anybody does have questions based on what we've reviewed today, feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hand and I can unmute you to allow you to ask your questions.
Is it possible to get a list of accounts with meters that are off project? Do you mean for your specific business to get a list of accounts um, as part of the audit process so that you can see um, kind of the data behind them? Yeah, yeah, uh, Tempe Water Conservation can help any business locate their list of accounts, provided that they verify um, their, their right to the access of them uh, for security purposes. So if you provide through your billing info, um, an account number and zip code, or you can verify address and things like that, we can help you locate your accounts, even if they're not related to this grant scope or um, a specific project. Any other questions? All right, if businesses would like assistance on training of staff, how do they go about requesting it and what should be included in the training? So if a business would like assistance on training staff, they can reach out to our conservation office using the contact information on the screen and then um, included in the training, anything that allows uh, you to train your staff on site specific conditions. So this includes how to identify leaks, notify you know the right staff members, say a facility person um, when you do notice leaks and kind of just encouraging the overall staff to understand and apply best management practices. So if you do a landscape project, you know walk staff around and let them know what efficient watering looks like and if there's overspray or damaged sprinkler head who should they notify things like that so just really getting boots on the ground um, secondary look um, as to what water conservation and efficiency looks like as it pertains to their business so does the training agenda need to be approved the agenda doesn't need to be approved. Um, it's meant to be a totally open format, whatever fits the businesses best. So if it is a tour, um, if it's a virtual program, whatever it may be, uh, we just ask that you have a rough idea of what that would look like and include that in the application. And we do have a specific section within the grant application that calls out um, and asks how you intend to meet the education requirement. So the agenda doesn't have to be pre-approved and then we do offer a template for the sign-in sheet which can be used um, just for convenience um, and it doesn't have to be exactly utilized that exact template doesn't have to be used but just meant to help streamline the process for businesses does anybody have any other questions If not, we're happy to have you reach out to our email account on screen, uh, conservation at tempe.gov, or give us a call to our conservation mailbox, and we'll be happy to follow up with you. We do really appreciate your time and listening to our webinar today. And if you think of any additional questions, like I said, just feel free to give us a shout. Um, we'll give it another minute if anything comes to mind. And if not, we will conclude the program. Does the application cycle timeline hold for this year? So um, if I understand the question correctly, this is effective um, pretty much at the end of this week. So the application cycle is effective right now, um, follows this fiscal year that's up and coming. Um, so yes, in short. All right, thanks. Thanks for attending.